Live from News 8, your neighborhood weather report. Welcome back. We have a sunny trade wind weekend in the forecast. Yes, I said trade winds. It looks like they should be back just in time for your Saturday and they will be sticking with us into next week. Also, we have a North Shore swell arriving late tomorrow. 8 to 12 foot faces expected on the north side. The west coming in at 4 to 6. Right now, no marine warnings in effect. It looks like this swell should be below advisory levels. 1 to 3 foot faces along east as well as south facing shores. That trough that brought us the unstable weather as well as those clouds and showers throughout the week this week is starting to lift out to the north and starting to dissipate. This will allow high pressure to fill back in and return the trade winds statewide as early as tomorrow. And as we work our way through the weekend and into next week, we'll see those trade winds increase a notch. As far as radar imagery, we've seen a few showers developing in the afternoon hours. Most of the showers have tapered off in the evening. In fact, most of the moisture coming in on the leeward side of the Big Island as well as Kauai, the central portion of the state has been rather quiet this evening and that's good news for trick-or-treaters who are out there this evening and those people enjoying the Halloween festivities into the late evening hours. We're looking at a partly cloudy holiday evening, Halloween evening I should say, also a holiday, an isolated shower, the easterly trades blowing at 10 to 15, temperatures in the low to mid 70s tonight and looking at your Saturday forecast, we should see sunshine over leeward areas, windward sections picking up a few isolated clouds as well as a few isolated showers and and as we work our way into the next five days, the trade winds will be increasing just a notch. We're looking at those trade winds to increase to about 15 to 25, in fact, by early next week. And with the breezier trade winds by midweek next week, we should also see the trade, trade showers on the upswing, mainly affecting windward areas. And Friday, Friday photo day. <laughs> hey, let's take a look at this great shot. Ooh. Beautiful oh. shot, uh, sunrise taken in Waimanalo, Paul, sent in by Paul and Sean Murakawa. Early risers, I believe they were out there mm -hmm. fishing. All right. So you can see the nice. cirrus clouds as well as the low level clouds out there. Very nice. And if you want to send us your favorite weather shot, you could send it to us at the address there on the screen, weather at khnl.com or here at the station. All Thanks right. a lot. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sherry, Sherry. Thank you much. Sure. Sam and Lyle are heading to Kalihi for this week's Cheap Eats. They're scaring up and dishing up more than just ghosts and goblins. Cheap Eats is coming up next on News 8 at 10. On the next Sam Choi's Kitchen, Opaka Paka in spinach luau sauce and poke patties, all with a delicious blend of the Makaha Suns. Sam Choi's Kitchen, Saturday. We all know it's Halloween. Time for Sam Lyle to scare up some cheap eats. It's a tiny place, only three tables, but boy, do the customers love the food. We're back in Kalihi at R&P's Cafe and Catering, and Sam, might I say, you've never looked so good. Wow, with a mouth like that, you're perfect for cheap eats. <laughs> Happy, Happy Halloween! Halloween. Oh. Yes, walk into R&P's Cafe. Happy Halloween, welcome to R&P's Cafe and Catering. And it's like every day is Halloween. Sam's in the kitchen with R&P's Preston Chun, where they're scaring up some ghosts and goblins. Plate lunches are priced from $4.45 to 5 bucks, and customers rave about the amount of food you get. The crab cake is a crab patty. The hamburger steak, we normally get one or two, you get three big patties. I'm a big guy. They, 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 the, the, the servings are really big. It's enough to fill me up. Whoa, this place is magic. Sam, happy Halloween. Happy Halloween, Lau. Lau? Yeah. <laughs> We're sampling some baked chicken, roast pork, Korean chicken, and a fruit platter. Little trick-or-treat treat right here. Hmm. Oh, Korean chicken. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lau, well, how was that, Lau? Oh, Sam, winners. Good up. Better than you find at the graveyard. It's r and Peace Cafe and Catering in Kalihi. Happy Halloween, everybody. <laughs> Up next in sports, the Damian Monarchs accomplished something they've never done in school history. And we have semifinal action from the OIA. Russell Yamanoha has the highlights next. News 8 at 10 continues now with Aloha Friday Football. Hi, doing, everybody? Welcome back to Aloha Friday Football. We start tonight with some bad news for one of the state's top prep football programs. Kamehameha, ranked number two in the state, is faced with a possible scandal tonight 
As we told you earlier, an unnamed school official told News 8 tonight that several football players have been suspended from school and will not play in the ILH Division I championship game tomorrow night against St. Louis. Reports say the players may have been involved in an incident last week on the Kamehameha campus in which they were videotaped engaging in sexual activity with a female student. A Kamehameha spokesman said tonight that he could neither confirm nor deny the report and he added that matters of disciplinary action against students are kept confidential in accordance with Kamehameha school policy. Several calls to school officials were not returned tonight, but again, several players on Kamehameha's football team have been suspended and will not play in the ILH championship game tomorrow night when the Warriors take on St. Louis. Moving on now to matters on the field, the OIA Division I playoffs into semifinal play tonight. To start us off, we got a top five battle. Number four, Kailua running with number five, Mililani, and the Trojans catch a break early. Ian Tanaka comes up with the fumble, and that would lead to some tricky stuff. The halfback option pass, Aaron Bisho to Jordan Abduhan. Two plays later, Mililani punches it in, but then Kailua comes surfing right back. Kelroy Kohatsu, he's got the ball, and he's not giving it up. Takes it just short of the goal line on the very next play. He's in, the first of 20 straight unanswered points for Kailua. Mililani kept off the board by plays like this. Kiahi Gu with the pick in the end zone. The Surf Riders printing that into points. Kohatsu deep to Dylan Linkner. That's a touchdown. This game's still underway, and it's in the fourth quarter with the score. There you see it. Kailua still holding to that 20-6 lead. In the early game, it was Kahuku taking on Farrington by Kukurbalio. He goes play action pass deep down the middle of the field as Kahuku trying to bounce back from an early 12-6 deficit. And that would set up Tabita Ofa. He takes it in for the Kahuku touchdown right here. Farrington trying to come back. Quarterback Eti Antonio, he's going to all-star Matt Bell. Unfortunately, the Red Raiders just too much tonight. Michael Garcia, he's going to punch it home for another Kahuku touchdown. The Red Raiders win this one big 42-18. They advance to next week's OIA Division I championship game. The ILH also into playoff ball. Damian and Iolani in a Division II battle. Raider quarterback Karen Kapo'o gets leveled. The ball gets scooped up by the Monarchs. Sony Savello, he returns it for a Damian touchdown. But Iolani coming back. Savello puts it up for Lee Koinaga. But Damian will come back to win this one. They win their first ILH title, 28 21, their first ILH Division II title. We move now to the college game. The Warrior football team is in San Jose, California tonight for a game tomorrow against San Jose State. The Spartans, no doubt, still hurting after they were absolutely hammered 77 to 14 last week at Boise State. But Hawaii not taking anything for granted. They've had their fair share of troubles on the road this year. Hawaii won't play at home again until Thanksgiving weekend. That's a fact not lost. The Hawaii defensive lineman, Mel Purcell. I'm getting sick and tired of these road games, man. I, I mean, I want our, our fans to be there. You know, I want the whole iron to be at, at every game we have. So I don't like road games and stuff like that. So it kind of throws me off. Spartans and Warriors, they're kicking off tomorrow morning at 10 Hawaii time. That's noon Pacific. You can catch that game on K5, the home team. It's coming to you live from San Jose, California. Finally in sports, a tough weekend for local golf star Michelle Wee. Round two of the CJ Nine Bridges Classic in South Korea just completed. And we firing a 78 and coupled with her first round 85. That's 19 over for the event. And she's likely not to make the cut. We have said that this would be her last LPGA event of the year as she concentrates on her freshman year at Punahou. It's a tough way to go through your freshman year. Let's send it back up to the dance. All right, Russell, thank you very Thanks, much. Russ talk about a frightening Halloween and we're not talking about the traffic in Waikiki. News 8 at 10 wraps up with a cliffhanger when we come back. Finally, we saw it under construction. We've been telling you about it for weeks. And tonight finally marked the grand opening of the new x cream ride at the Stratosphere Casino and Hotel in Las Vegas. The teeter-totter ride dips passengers <laughs> over the edge of the tower and speed with speeds at speeds of up to 30 miles an hour. Riders feel as though they're plummeting to the Vegas Strip below. It'll cost you $8 to ride to the top of the Stratosphere. Once there, you'll have to pay an additional fee to ride x cream I'll just go down the uh, traditional wow. way. You could not pay me enough. Appropriately named, I'd be screaming. <laughs> yeah, really. Would you do it? No. No, 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 no. No. 
Are you crazy? The Tonight Show with Jay Leno is coming up next. <laughs> Thank you for watching News 8 at 10. Happy Halloween. Yes. Good night.